this video, we're going to take a look at dividing fractions. So the rule, like when we're multiplying fractions, the rule is if we have something like A over B times C over D, when we're multiplying, we would just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, or you can simplify it before you start to multiply. It's bad to be. You can simplify it before you start to multiply, and then you can multiply or simplify at the end. Kind of, you have some freedom there. Now, when we're dividing, we don't have the same steps. Like, it's not just going to be like if I am just looking at this first problem real fast, four fifths divided by five over 16, I'm not just doing four divided by five and five divided by 16. That's not exactly how it's working. So, let's think about just the concept of dividing. If I have a line segment and I call this line segment one unit long, and I want to divide that in half, so I want to divide it by two. What happens to that line segment that's a one unit long? If I'm dividing it by two, I'm cutting it in half to get two segments, half inch or half foot, whatever unit we're talking about, in half. <clears throat> so that one unit, I divide by two, so because I want two of them, so each of those are a half unit long. Okay, let's apply that now to fractions. If I have a unit, uh, a line segment here, that's a one half unit length long. So call it whatever you want, whatever units you want to use. And I want to divide that by two. So I want to do one half divided by two. So I want to divide this segment that's half long, half units long. What do I get? Well, if I cut that in half, each segment then is a fourth. So cutting a half in half, so one half divided by two, would then create a unit that's a fourth. Just like over here, when I had a unit that was one unit long, like a, a segment that was one unit long, I divide that by two, I get segments that are half long. So how do we get from a half divided by two, how do we get that to equal one fourth? That's, that's very strange. Like how do we actually end up getting to that point where we get a fourth? What we're gonna do is, so this is one half divided by two over one, so I'm doing one half divided by two over one. When I'm dividing fractions, I am taking the first fraction, changing multiplication, changing division to multiplication, and taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. So this becomes one half. So we change division to multiplication, we take the reciprocal of the second fraction, and now we have a multiplication question. So now the same properties apply to multiplication so like i started off this video by saying a over b times c over d we can multiply across the top multiply across the bottom and then simplify or simplify at the beginning and then multiply whatever you want to do but we are now just in a multiplication scenario so i can multiply across the top one times one is one two times two is four so i get one fourth there you go so if i take in a half and i'm cutting that unit in half I am creating two segments that are a fourth unit long. So the answer would be a fourth. So we're going to take that idea now and do some problems. Let's move this off to the side. Oh, taking my title with me. That's okay. So I have four fifths divided by five sixteenths. So I am not able, though, to simplify because I know when you're multiplying, like if I had four fifths times five over 16. What you would do is you notice, well, I have a five on bottom, five on top. I have a four on top, 16 on bottom. That's going to be one fourth. I would do that. I would make that simplification, and then I'd go through the process of multiplying. We can't do that when it's division. It has to be a multiplication question in order for us to start simplifying or multiplying. So I want to take the first fraction, four fifths, change division to multiplication, and take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So this becomes 16 over 5. Uh, so then here we want to just multiply across. So multiplying across gets us 64, 4 times 16. And I don't have any simplifications that can be made because I had 5, 4 does not go into 5, 5 doesn't go into 16, so I can't simplify anything there. So then 4 times 16 is 64, 5 times 5 is 25, so then you get 64 over 25. And that does not simplify. And you could write it as a mixed fraction if you want, but just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it as is. So then 3 over 8 divided by 3 over 10. 
Here we have three over eight, change division to multiplication, take the reciprocal of three over 10, change that to 10 over three. Now I'm in the situation where I can simplify because I have a three on the top of my fraction and a three on the bottom. And then I also have eight and 10. Now eight doesn't go into 10, but they both have two that goes into eight and two goes into 10. They both have factors of two that can simplify down. So I'm gonna cancel out those threes because three divided by three is one. And then what I'm thinking about is eight and 10. Two goes into eight and two goes into 10, nothing bigger. So I'm gonna take eight. So what I'm, the process that I would do is eight divided by two is four. So this eight would change to a four. And then I would do 10 divided by two, which is five. So this would change to a five. So really I would have one over four times five over one because the three's canceled. And then I have the four and the five. Nothing else can simplify. So I'd multiply across the top. Five times one is five. Four times one is four. So I get five fourths. <clears throat> So you gotta find that factor, greatest common factor that you could take out of both eight and eight and 10, which would be two. So in this next one, seven over six divided by seven over 15, it's a division question. So we're gonna rewrite seven over six, change division to multiplication, take the reciprocal of the second fraction, 15 over seven. So I have a seven on top, seven on bottom. So those are gonna simplify down to one. Then I have six and 15. So six and 15, six does not go into 15. And don't just go right by it and say like, well, six doesn't go into 15, two doesn't go into 15, so I have nothing. We'll think a little bit more. Three goes into six and three goes into 15. So I can divide six and 15 by three. So this is gonna be six divided by three, which is two. And then this is gonna be 15 divided by three, which is five. So I'll have one half times five over one one times five is five, two times one is two, so I get five halves. Okay, let's look at a little bit more complicated. So number five I have on my document here, I have negative 48 over nine divided by 16 over 21. So first of all, that looks pretty scary because there's a lot of a lot of numbers being thrown around. We have a negative in there. So let's just go step by step. We Let's change the division to multiplication. So negative 48 over nine, change division to multiplication, take the reciprocal of that second fraction, so 21 over 16. So I'm looking at that and I see a lot of possibilities here. I see nine and 21, I know three goes into nine, I know three goes into 21, um, nine does not go into 21, so I think the biggest number is probably gonna be nine, or uh, the biggest factor is gonna be three, so let's divide each of these by three, so nine divided by three is three, 21 divided by three is seven. Now I'm looking at the 16 and 28. So it depends on like, do you have a calculator with you? Are you good with your multiplication facts? Like looking at 48 and 16, you might not know for sure, like does 16 go into 48? And you might not have exactly a lot of time to just sit there and start checking to see. I mean, it's not super complicated to do, but maybe you could try just something different. So what I would try is just noticing that like, well, 16 and 48 are even, so I could for sure divide it by two. And then you think, well, four goes into 48. So let's at least go by four, because we know four goes into 16, four goes into 48, and then maybe something bigger goes into there. Like, oh, then you start to think like, wait, wait so two goes in, four goes in. Uh, so what about eight? Does eight go in? Eight goes into 16, two times. Eight goes into 48, six times. So, okay, like, all right, I at least know eight. And then 16, you can figure this out, but maybe you're like, you know what, let me just go with eight and then I'll see what happens. So I'm gonna divide both 16 and 48 by eight. So 16 divided by eight is two. And then 48 divided by eight is six. So then, then you realize, oh wait, I have negative six over three times seven over two. Two possibilities here. I mean, you could actually take this a couple different ways, but I notice now, based on this 48 and 16, I could have taken out a little bit bigger. I could have probably went up to 16 because two also goes into six. So I could simplify this now by two. So two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. Maybe you'll catch this one. 
three and three are both right here. I have a positive three and a three on that same fraction. So three over three, that's going to just be one. So I will have negative one over one times seven over one. Look at that. So then we're just gonna get negative seven. So going back to the beginning, nine and 21, I divided both of those by three. 9 divided by 3, 21 divided by 3. And then 48 and 16, I could have also went up to 16, but let's just, I was just pretending like, oh, we don't have a calculator available or we're not good with our multiplication facts, so we have to just play around with the numbers that we have. And I was able to work my way up to 8, then I wasn't positive on 16, so I divided it by 8, and then that got me to 6 and 2, which, oh, 2 goes into 6, so 2 becomes a 1, 6 becomes a 3, and then I have these 3s. So you can work it through without a calculator, just dividing by 2 or 4, or trying to just work your way up that ladder, of potential values there. So let's do one more. In this video, I have negative 2 ninths divided by negative 16 uh, over 27. And that last one uh, was negative because it's negative divided by a positive. So that negative stayed. But here we see a negative and a negative. So we know we're going to get a positive. But let's just work through it here. So I'll have negative 2 ninths times negative 27 over 16. So with a 2 and the 16, I know all I could divide by is 2 there. So let's just chop that off. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then the 9 and the 27, that one, can I try to, so I know 3 and 3. But 9 goes into 9, and 9 goes into 27. So I'm going to divide them by 9. So 9 divided by 9 is 1. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So I'll have negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. 1 times 8 is 8, so I get 3 eighths. So dividing fractions, you're not actually dividing. I showed you with that whole fraction demonstration, this becomes multiplication, and then you take the reciprocal of that second fraction, and then it becomes a multiplication question. So I hope this helps you out with dividing fractions.